this is the biggest lie about the thyroid that you believe. In this video, I'm going to tell you about five myths that are widely spread and can seriously harm your thyroid health. Because if you believe these lies, you might make the wrong decisions. And many times I see in practice as a thyroid specialist doctor that a lot of people take actions extremely harmful to the thyroid because of false information. So it's very important for you to pay attention to these five points I've set aside. In this video, five lies so you know what to do and also what not to do when it comes to your thyroid. This video is for people who have had their thyroid removed. I'll talk about that too. And it's also for, for individuals who have a thyroid disease, whether it's hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, and also for people who are perfectly healthy, who don't have any kind of significant thyroid problem, whose thyroid gland is functioning exceptionally well. So pay close attention. What's the very first common lie about certain foods that truly harm the delicate thyroid gland? You've probably seen some video saying you can't eat broccoli, that you absolutely shouldn't consume or ingest milk or any dairy products whatsoever, is that correct? Eat cheese, for example. Have you read that? And about broccoli, cauliflower, cruciferous vegetables. Or even that you shouldn't use olive oil. There are a lot of myths about the thyroid. And the answer is that there isn't any food that can harm your thyroid in the amounts you would consume in your daily routine. For example, this thing about broccoli. And the thyroid issue came from a study done on rats that were fed only cruciferous vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, and these rats developed hormonal problems. And also goiter, which is when the thyroid becomes large, increases in size. But in humans, this didn't happen, so there's no need to be afraid, just like with other foods. What happens? If you have a diet rich in ultra-processed foods, processed meats, ready-made meals, that will harm your health in general, not specifically. The thyroid, okay? So for thyroid health, there are no forbidden foods. That's all a lie. And why are there so many lies? Because fear sells. A lot of people benefit from these lies. Oh, you can't eat this or that food. For sure, the video would be shared over and over again. So there are a lot of people profiting from this, spreading false information, okay? So the first lie you shouldn't believe is that there are foods that destroy your thyroid, or harm it, or wreck your thyroid. I often see this term being used. The second lie, which is widely spread around and that I've never talked about here on the channel. By the way, I wanna thank a subscriber who commented on this question. It got a lot of likes. It's important for you to like the questions too, because that way they get highlighted and that way I can answer them. And this one here, I'm answering it here in the middle of the video, and it's about thyroid nodule biopsy. There are a lot of people who believe that a biopsy of a thyroid nodule, or a fine needle aspiration, that a thyroid FNA could be a way for malignant cells from the nodule to spread throughout the body, increasing the risk of metastasis. This is a hypothesis that came up. It's been around for many decades, but the idea still lingers, the belief remains. So I see that in practice, a lot of people still say this. Oh, the doctor recommended a thyroid biopsy and I'm afraid to do it because I heard that these malignant cells, if that's the case, could spread throughout my body, right? This theory came up as I explained many, many years ago. However, it was never confirmed, okay? So it's a lie. A thyroid nodule biopsy or aspiration does not increase the risk of metastasis, all right? That information is false. If you believe in this, know that you don't need to be afraid of having any exam done. About the thyroid being afraid that you'll get metastasis, that's not going to happen because of that. If it happens, it's because of the tumor itself, due to the specific characteristics of the tumor, okay? And not because of the procedure itself. Myth number three, and this one is also very common, is about the use of the T3 hormone. It's spreading here on the internet. That using T3 is better than T4 because T3 would be the octave form of the thyroid hormone, right? That's actually true. 
really the body converts T4 into T3, and T3 is the form that has more activity. However, hormone replacement, the treatment for hypothyroidism, is done with T4 because it is more stable in our blood. It's easier to control. And with the use of T3, besides being more unstable, there is an increased risk of side effects like cardiac arrhythmias, osteoporosis, for example, and it's harder to control. But why does T3 even exist then? That's a common question. You probably wondered about that if you're watching this video. Why? In some cases, there are patients who don't convert T4 into T3. These cases are rare, extremely rare. And in those cases, T3 can be added to help reduce symptoms of hypothyroidism, for example. But these are exceptional cases. That's what I wanted to make clear to you here, okay? The initial treatment for hypothyroidism is done with the hormone in the T4 form. Agreed. The fourth myth about the thyroid, and this one is also widely spread, you've definitely seen it, is that toothpaste contains chlorine. This would supposedly harm your thyroid because you can't ingest chlorine, and the chlorine would compete with your thyroid and block the hormonal production of your thyroid. The same applies to swimming pool baths with chlorine, or even a shower, where the vapor from the chlorinated water would be inhaled and could harm the formation. Hormones. Have you heard any of these lies? I'll tell you right now that this is completely false, okay? For example, toothpaste. You're not going to eat toothpaste. You're not going to eat a whole tube of toothpaste every time you brush your teeth, right? You're going to use a small amount, and that amount has no scientific evidence that it will affect your thyroid. The same goes for swimming pool baths or showers, okay? The amount? It's very small. It's not enough to cause you any harm. But what if I take the chlorine from the pool and start drinking that water with a lot of chlorine? If I take the chlorine? Well, that's a very delicate situation that you're not going to do, right? I'm talking here. Usual situations, everyday situations. Taking a shower, swimming in a pool, brushing your teeth with toothpaste. All of that. There's no scientific evidence that any of this will harm your thyroid. After all, if it did, practically everyone would have a thyroid problem. So you don't need to be afraid of this. That kind of worry will just make you really anxious, thinking everything will harm your thyroid. Yeah, if you brush your teeth, it harms your thyroid. If you take a shower, you'll have thyroid problems. That's not how it works, okay? Several studies have already proven this. The frequency in the group that did these things compared to the other group is the same. So people will develop thyroid issues using fluoride-free toothpaste, just like people who use toothpaste with fluoride well too, at the same rate. That's the point here, okay? So let's get rid of this fear, this big myth about the thyroid. And myth number five, what about this one? You've definitely heard this one too, which is about supplementation for the thyroid. And also the use of hormones to boost thyroid function. Have you heard any of these things? And the answer is that there is no specific supplement for the thyroid. To keep your thyroid healthy, you need certain amounts of selenium and zinc. You can get these amounts with a minimally balanced diet. I'm not even talking about an excellent diet, just a minimally balanced one. By eating vegetables, leafy greens, fruits and nuts, like Brazil nuts or walnuts, you get selenium and zinc. Also, by eating eggs and proteins. So, you'll get the amount of these nutrients your thyroid needs, okay? There's no such thing as a supplement for this. In exceptional situations, for example, during pregnancy, when the thyroid needs a bit more of these nutrients, then yes, a doctor might prescribe something, but those are exceptions, like pregnancy, as I mentioned here, okay? In normal, everyday situations, there is no specific supplement for the thyroid. And what about using hormones to boost thyroid function? I've already mentioned this many times, okay? That's also not true. What does exist is the use of hormones to treat hypothyroidism, but not for a healthy thyroid. This can be extremely harmful, because when you take thyroid hormone without needing it, your body, your thyroid, will get lazy. That's true. It will stop producing its own hormone, which then leads to what we call drug-induced hypothyroidism. 
That's when the doctor themselves causes a disease in the patient by using the hormone in an improper and arbitrary way. So there needs to be a clear indication. For whom? For people who actually have a thyroid disease, not for supplementation or cosmetic purposes. This can be very dangerous. What other myth is there? Or maybe what do you think is a myth that you've heard about the thyroid? Ask here in the comments. Leave your question here. Who knows, maybe I'll make a part two to you. From zero to 10, what score would you give this video? Now I'm gonna leave a recommendation for you to watch. It's a video where I talked about the first signs of cancer. In fact, I also talked about the thyroid in that video. Would you know how to recognize the first signs of cancer? If you click here, you'll be taken to that video. Take care, see you next time.